feeling pretty sick. We're setting up the last 26 seconds, though, for the why they play. Why they didn't kick the ball deep, we can't figure it out. They, they uh, allowed us to get the ball at our 40-yard line. Here's the interference play on uh, Kane, and uh, it was the right call. The guy went in there and hooked his arm ahead of the pass arriving. And uh, we throw a couple of uh, pa incomplete passes here. And as it turns out, this next one, uh, incomplete to Pierce. If he had caught it, I think the game would have been over. Uh, and uh, four seconds would have, you know, run off the clock. Let's pick up the description now from Channel 3. The eight-yard field goal by Rich M. 31-30 the final as the homecoming crowd at Charleston goes bananas. One of the longest field goals you'll ever see in college football. Eastern is now 5-1, and one, looking pretty good. Okay, two more times, Al, if you want to make a comment. Well, you know, it's... Uh... What do you say about a kick like that? You know, you just thank God that uh, Rich Emke had the uh, guts to go out there and stand up and kick the ball. And not to mention that he kicked it 58 yards for the winning score in, a, in the biggest game of the year. So uh, uh, we, made, we made the right decision as it turned out. And, uh, you know, everything worked out the way we wanted it to. And, and that's the result. All right. Did, did you have a chance to say anything? Uh, there we see the final score. Did you have a chance to say anything to Rich at all before he went out there? No, I just sent the team on the field. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, what it was running through my mind was that, uh, uh, you know, what I've already said, the, the odds on a pass uh, were, you know, extremely limited. And I felt that, uh, uh, you know, with the wind and uh, hitting the ball exactly right, maybe it would carry 58 yards. At least uh, they couldn't. You know, the odds on them blocking it weren't as good as they were of blocking or knocking down a pass. So, Right, and they probably weren't going to try to block it and risk no, uh, anything. No, I'm sure they felt that it was just a matter of the kick and it was over. Yeah, you know. yeah. Couldn't tell you from the players there out there jumping around afterwards. <laughs> I don't know. If it, did you have a chance to, <laughs> to see your reaction oh, yeah. anybody else? Sure did. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I was just as happy as everyone else. And uh, immediately uh, I got knocked on the ground, and I thought I was going to get trampled by the people coming off the sideline, and I yeah. couldn't get up for a minute there. But, but uh, you know, you just, uh, you just can't believe those kinds of things. In, in my coaching career, we've had some games that have dis been decided by kicks. I, I was able to remember one that was decided by a 51-yard field goal in uh, waning moments of the game, and then we won a game one time with a fourth and goal from the 25, and we caught the ball in the end zone against a prevent coverage, but but never has there been one in, what, 160-some games I've coached. Uh, this this is the, by far and away, the most outstanding. Right, and it was your 100th coaching victory, which had to add well, a little impact to it. Yeah, but very little. I, really, that's, uh, you know, it, the, the win is, uh, is enjoyable because we did it as a team and it means so much to us in this season and that's that's the key right yeah right. okay we've got rich emke and Derek wilhelms coming up to talk about the uh, fantastic ending let's go to those two interviews right now we're standing on the spot where rich emke just moments ago kicked an incredible 58 yard field goal this is it right here rich how do you feel now Did you had a little uh, time to think about it I'll tell you, it really still hasn't hit me yet. It's, you know, it's a dream come true. It's really unbelievable. I'm just glad my teammates gave me, gave me the opportunity, you know, to win the game. What did you think coming in? Did you think we had a, a chance to get within field goal range? Well, I knew, I knew when they scored the go-ahead touchdown, that I pretty, was pretty sure that they were going to, you know, kick a squib kick, and that put us in pretty good field position there. And then, uh, then the one pass play uh, to Willie Kane that they call pass interference, I knew, you know, I knew then at least I'd have an outside shot at it. 50 yards, 58 yards is the longest in Gateway Conference history. It's the longest in Eastern Illinois University history. I'm guessing it's the longest in Rich Emke's history. Yeah, the longest I hit a 52 last year, but yeah, this is a little bit farther. Tremendous amount of pressure. Did you have much time to even think about it? Uh, not really. I pretty much went down by myself, you know, and just wanted to concentrate on, you know, gliding into the ball, making everything smooth, you know, and just concentrating on getting a good kick. I wasn't really trying to worry about the pressure, the score, or anything like that. Coach, you say anything to you on the sideline before you went in? No, I just, matter of fact, there was four. I saw there was an incomplete pass, and there's four seconds left, and we still have one timeout, so I started jogging on the field. And PC, Pat Carroll, said, you know, hold up a minute. 
And I said, Coach, you know, let's let's just let's go for it. And he said, All right, go ahead. You got it. We got to try it. So he just came out on the field, and you know, we were fortunate enough that we got it. How about when you got on the field in the huddle? Uh, players say anything to you? No, because I'm pretty much I pretty much get by myself. You know, they just said, you know, give it your all, and you know, they they did a great job of protection. You know, Butch Bresky and Pat Carroll and the offensive line. You know, they deserve just as much credit as I do because they're out there and the pressure's on them just as much as it's on me. And you know, it's a it's really a team game, and it came down to a team effort on the last play. Pat Carroll, let's put in a plug for Pat. He's been holding for you all year. Yeah, he has. I tell you, he's he's a great holder. He's got the quickest hands I've ever seen, ever been associated with, and uh, his sense of humor. He really helps. He really helps me, you know, keep it loose, you know, so I don't get. Sometimes I get a little too worried about things, and you know, start getting down on myself about some kicks that I miss. And he said, "Hey, and, you know, ain't nothing but a thing." And you know, really, that's the truth. And he's really helped me along. Did you know it was good when it left your foot? Yeah, I have to say, as soon as I hit it, and it was right down the middle, and I knew I hit it hard, and I was just, I was just waiting and kind of gliding back because I couldn't see over the top of the lineman's heads, and I wanted to make sure, you know, that it went through. And then, then Pat body slammed me, and uh, that was the extent of that. I pretty much figured it was good after that. And then here came the rest of the players and the people out of the stands, and uh, it had to be the high point of your career. Oh, uh, no, no doubt about it. It was, it was fantastic, fantastic. You know, not a not a feeling could match that I mean it was just <laughs> unbelievable you know it's still it still really has not hit me I probably have to watch it kick a couple times and just you know go over it in my mind but it's it's pretty unreal anybody from northern Iowa say anything to you no matter of fact I don't you know I, I tried to get over it, you know to I always talked to the other team's kicker and I, I couldn't get over there I was just pretty much mobbed by other people and I didn't get a chance to talk to any other the other teammates or you know any other teammates Anybody in California, you're going to go home and call here in a few minutes? Uh, I'll probably give uh, my ex-girlfriend a call at home, or I should say she's still my girlfriend, but, uh, you know, we're seeing other people, that type of deal. And I'll probably call a sports writer from my local hometown. He always tells me to call him and tell him how I'm doing. This obviously uh, really propels us for next week, and it's a big game over at Western Illinois now. I hate, I like to keep talking about this, and I know you would too, but uh, we got to come back. I'll tell you, you know, uh, we got a really, really good ball club. Um, everybody is really being united as a team, and I'll tell you, we control our own destiny the rest of the way. You know, I, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to Tacoma. I'm not looking ahead of anybody, but you know, we keep playing the way we are. We're going to end up in the dome in December. Tacoma, the Dome, you're talking about the national championship game out in Washington, which is not too far from where you live. Uh, not too far, you know, just uh, that'll, be, that'll be a good homecoming of sorts, I guess. Go from there and go home for Christmas and hopefully have a ring on our finger. When you say go home for Christmas, we're talking California. You're from the San Diego area. You went to Grossmont Junior College. Uh, how'd you get clear out here in Illinois? Well, Evan, who's from, uh, from my junior college, I knew a little bit about him. And I've been been recruited by like I was recruited by BYU in Illinois, and I just ended up fi finishing out second. You know, they brought in other kickers, and it was between Eastern and Eastern Michigan, and I decided you know to come here because of what Evan had told me, and it was a good offense, a good program. It wasn't you know they weren't rebuilding, and I you know I'd have I'd have a good opportunity. And you did, and thank goodness you made that decision, right? Yeah, I guess. Rich, again, congratulations. Let's keep it going. Thank you very much. That's Rich Hamke. We're also talking to Derek Wilhelms here after the game, and uh, Derek, some great catches. that kept some drives going. You have to feel pretty good about your play. Oh, I just did what I, I thought that, you know, I went out for the patterns, and I got open, and Sean threw me the ball, and I brought him in and did, you know, with the team. Everybody plays as a team, and we can win. It was a close game, and we ended up winning. Incredible there, that last field goal. What did you guys think? I know we just talked to Rich Emke about it. What was the rest of the team's thoughts when he went out there? Do you think he had a shot at a 58-yarder? Well, it was the only chance we had, and we all just said, hey, we was in the huddle. We said, you know, we, we're sticking together as a team. No matter what happens, let's just block and let him have a chance to kick. We gave him his chance, and uh, he won through. And he made it. Yeah, it was great. Derek, at the end of last year, you were a leading tackler on the team, and in the spring, you got shifted over to offense. Uh, your thoughts at the time, I don't think you were really excited about that, but you did it. Yeah, um, they just said that that was what they thought would be the best, and I guess our inside linebackers are doing a pretty damn good job, and um, I accept it now, and I'll continue playing offense until they decide that they want me to switch back or whatever. You've been starting to tie it in. You have to, again, feel good about what you've done because you only caught three or four today. You've caught some big passes in some other games. So you really, you've really, you got good hands out there. 
Uh, you know, I get I don't get to go out on many routes, but um, when I do, I just try to get open, and when the ball's thrown to me, I just try to pull it in and see what I can do when I get the ball. The big win over Northern Iowa certainly wasn't the end of the season by any stretch of the imagination. The Panthers go up to Macomb to play a rejuvenated Western Illinois University. They're four and two. It's going to be tough when it's their homecoming. Well, it will, Dave. Uh, you know, <clears throat> the, I had mentioned to our player council last week that really the next three weeks are what we really have to look at. Now, we can't overlook Northern Iowa, obviously. Um, as we saw, that game was, uh, was something of a struggle, to put it mildly. But um, the uh, <clears throat> Western Illinois game is going to be a very tough football game for us. And, and uh, we're just going to have to... Uh, respond uh, and show some character and, and go over there and, and play well, play up to our potential and, and hope that that will take, and uh, you know, that'll take care of the winning. The winning will take care of itself then if we can do that. But uh, hey, we face a challenge this week and we face another big challenge uh, in a week uh, playing Southwest. Both teams uh, were their homecoming opponent. Right. Western's Albert Brown's a great all-purpose runner. Is he the key, stopping him, stopping them offensively? Well, some teams have been beaten by uh, Western this year, allowing Albert Brown to get loose on kickoff returns. So uh, we cannot allow him to, uh, to use his speed and, and come up with a great big plays against us. So uh, whether he's uh, lined up at wide receiver or you know deep returning kickoffs, we've got to uh, defend him successfully. There's no question about that. But, but Western Illinois has some great talent. Yeah, their, their other receiver, uh, Nate Blanks, has got great speed too. So uh, I think in the league, uh, you know, uh, Western Illinois probably closely resembles us, uh, us having Kane and Banks. They've got Blanks and Brown, and, and uh, th those two guys have got speed. So, but they have a good defensive team. Uh, they're well coached. Uh, it's their homecoming. They, uh, you know, they can make their season with a win over Eastern. It's a uh, nervous time again, Dave. Right, but well, it's going to be another fun week of preparation, yeah, no doubt should. about it. It should, I, and our kids are really responding well. And, uh, you know, uh, the season is starting to take shape in the way in which we had hoped and set our goals for it to take place. And, and uh, if we can just go over there and, and win, uh, it's going to, again, uh, help us to grow in character as a team, and which will, in the end, uh, make the difference between a great team and a good team. Okay, I'll see you next week. That's it for Coach's Corner, games at Western Illinois. Join us next week for the highlights right here. Panthers won their sixth in a row, another big gateway victory, another one on the road, 37 to 3 over Western Illinois. Al Moldy, you won the victory, which I'm sure you never expected uh, margin quite that uh, wide. Well, I was pretty surprised, Dave. I really felt uh, that the game was going to be a, a hard fought contest between two pretty evenly matched teams. And uh, the way it turned out, uh, we had our way of things uh, most of the day. We obviously didn't want to let down, and we didn't get a let down. Uh, I didn't see a lot of emotion from our kids, but they came ready to play. Oh, they were. They were uh, loose, but uh, really ready to play. We could, they were kind of loose last week, and uh, you know, I, <clears throat> at times I worried about that, and maybe that's just uh, you know head coach anxiety or whatever. But uh, but uh, I could tell Friday night at our team meetings that uh, they were pretty intent on playing well the next day, and uh, they were certainly ready to play and. Uh, we had uh, no lack of respect for Western Illinois, and uh, 
Uh, I thought it was a very uh, uh, good example of uh, you know our team's level of maturity and and just where they've come. So. Uh, uh, I was pleased with the way we played. Yeah, I really think we're playing with a lot of confidence, or what mm -hmm. I see is a lot of confidence right. on